ladies and gentlemen, with the amount of missing children that we have, it's, it's just happening too commonly. But I believe that this little boy is still alive. We can still find him. I believe there is a huge chance that we could actually do an update pretty quick and find this baby boy. So make sure that you guys look at this picture. Let me back it up just a little bit. I want y'all to remember this face, remember these pictures. Because we, if we are able to find him, this could be another success story that not only the people who are listening to this stream can provide, but other people that we can provide another positive thing that the people in the community care to help find our babies and get answers. As the search for this little boy continues, and, and uh, please remember that, that I'm gonna give some opinions that may or may not sit well with your sensibilities, so that's your disclaimer. But a search continues for a four-year-old Hampton boy who was reported missing Monday. Police said that the information that they received from the boy's father, biological father, about his disappearance conflicts with other evidence that they have found. So let me give you guys a synopsis. This boy went missing. The parents gave information about this boy. The information that they had, the police and the investigators went and researched and found out that this boy's dad was giving false information. Can y'all smell that? Y'all smell that? Remember when I told y'all that when there, where there's smoke, there's usually fire? And I've always said with missing children and forgive me if people get offended by what I say. But I think whoever had last custody, last possession of these children when the children went missing, those people need to be investigated more and harder than anything. Right? Too many times just on my channel alone, I could present to you a slew of stories of children and the people who last had custody of these kids were the ones responsible for the disappearance of the kids in the first place. So the fact that this biological father is lying, I think that's a huge red flag. Thank you for posting that in the chat, in the live chat. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up if you would, please, because I want more people to chime in on this. We don't believe that four-year-old Cody Bixby just wandered off, and we don't believe that he was abducted, according to Hampton Police Chief Mark Talbot said at a press conference on Tuesday morning. Cody Bixby's father reported him missing at 9.06 a.m. Monday from a residence in the 100 block of Renolet Drive in the Buck Row Beach neighborhood. Talbot said that evidence they've uncovered conflicts with the story Cody's parents and other caregivers have told investigators. Let me also give a quick preface. There was no Amber Alert put out for this boy. So if you heard about Cody's story, then you probably just heard it in the news. The reason why there was no Amber Alert, because Amber Alerts have to fall under a certain category before they can put the information out there. They have to believe that these children are abducted. They didn't put an Amber Alert out. That means they don't think this child was abducted. What does that mean? That means that, th that the answer is very, very close as to what happened. There is a person of interest. We are most interested in Cody's parents, Talbot said. Corey Bixby, who was Cody's father, told investigators that he had last seen his son asleep around 2 a.m., but when he woke up, Cody was missing. Bixby said that he searched his home before calling the police. <laughs> Smells like bullshit. Let's keep going. The information from Bixby is not reliable, according to Talbot. Investigators have found evidence that has led them to question the credibility of information they've received from Cody's parents and other adults who may have helped care for him. So they're asking the public for information to determine when he was last seen, where this is where the hashtag see something, say something can help 
give justice to a kid or potentially find this baby boy. Even if you think it's not important, if you think you know something, call and report it. Give tips. That's what this is all about. The little bit of information you give sometimes can help tremendously in these stories. The evidence that we have does not completely match the stories that have, we've received at this point. Talbot, who declined to comment on whether investigators believe the child is still alive. We will work if he's out there waiting for us to find him. Cody is a four-year-old black male, approximately three foot tall. He may be wearing black clothing and Spider-Man flip-flops. Police say that Cody lived with his father and that there were other young children in the home when Cody was said to, dis said to disappear. Investigators also spoke with Cody's mother. Talbot did not name her, but said that she did not live in the home. It's perfectly fine if that's the way Things are, sometimes the kids live with the mom, sometimes the kids live with the dad. Talbot declined to comment on whether there was a history of neglect in the family. Search teams, including the FBI, have focused on the Buck Row Point apartment homes, uh, townhome, excuse me, complex and immediately surrounding area using people on foot as well as drones and helicopters. So a lot of resources. Sergeant Reggie, uh, Reggie Williams confirmed late Tuesday that the search had expanded to the city-owned steam plant near the NASA Langley Research Center, the same location, the same location where authorities found the body of missing two-year-old Noah Tomlin back in 2019. Williams said police were searching the steam plant as an element of the comprehensive search. Talbot confirmed that teams were also searching the water, but did not say where they were searching. It's unlikely that he is in the city of Hampton, Talbot said. The farther, the farther that we get away from his home, the less likely it is that he's going to be found. On the first day of the search, police asked the community to stay home and share Cody's photo on social media. But on Tuesday, the police department asked for 50 volunteers to assist with the search. In less, than one hour, in less than an hour, the volunteer slots were filled. Good job to the people. Thank you for the volunteers. Investigators are now looking to the public. Sorry, this thing closed out my article. Are looking to the public to confirm the last time Cody may have been seen. And I'm getting this from dailypress.com. So thank you for the article. If there's anybody who has knowledge that the last time Cody was out in the city of Hampton or anywhere else, we want to know. We are interested in speaking to anyone who has seen him, but in particular, if we could focus our attention on the time that extends from around noon this past Sunday up until yesterday morning at around 9 o'clock. Tips can be submitted online at P, the, the letter P, the number 3, T-I-P-S, p3tips.com or by calling Crime Stoppers line at 888 L O C the letter U U P lock you up police did not issue an Amber Alert because investigators do not believe he was abducted so for those who wonder why there was no Amber Alert in order to issue an Amber Alert police must believe or must have a reasonable belief an abduction has occurred and that the child is in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or death. Law enforcement must have enough information, descriptive information about the victim and the possible abduction. The reason why they have that criteria is so that they can get this information out properly and execute proper searches. It just expedites the whole process. It makes it work so much more efficiently. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Let me listen to the news videos. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to distribute or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, and thank you to everybody who's listening. Please don't forget, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. It will help us out quite a bit. So if you're listening, hit that thumbs up. All right, let's get it.
Breaking news at midday, Hampton's police chief says the parents of a missing four-year-old boy are persons of interest. Meanwhile, officers are asking for the public's help to find Cody Bigsby, and the FBI has joined the search. Bigsby's father reported him missing yesterday morning, according to investigators. Hampton police spoke to reporters about the case this morning. Our Andy Fox was there, and Andy, police say what the parents told them initially just is not adding up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, at today's news conference, the police chief called on 50 volunteers to come out and try to find the places and search the places that Cody could be. Let me show you real quick. We also have a drone here. They have brought out the drones to search areas as well. They're testing it right now. We're in a parking lot near where Cody uh, lived. Uh, and lives, but it is what the police chief Mark Talbot said about Cody's parents that tells us a lot about this investigation. The father, Corey Bigsby, and the mother, he would not answer questions as to the mother's name. The chief called on 50 volunteers, as I said, to search the areas where he could be. Uh, he wants anyone who saw Cody Sunday noon to 9 a.m. Monday. They want surveillance video, Any anybody with knowledge. They do not believe this was an adoption abduction uh, had taken place so there was no need for an amber alert but it is clear police are looking at the parents for more and better answers there is a person of interest we are most interested in cody's parents Breaking news in the search for four-year-old Cody Bigsby, and it's big news. As Hampton Police Chief Mark Talbot said, they are closely looking at the young boy's parents in connection with his disappearance. Chief Mark Talbot just updating us on new developments in this case. And 13 News Now has team coverage here at noon as police are asking now for volunteers to help search for the child. We start with Allison Basil. Allison, a lot of brand new information, so what all did the chief have to say? Yes, a lot, Dan, and I thought the person of interest comment was, was definitely key, but I want to show you we are more than 24 hours into this search. You can see lots of different crews behind me. I know we have the Virginia Department of Emergency Management here today. They just put up another tent for people searching, but still we have not found Cody Bigsby. Chief Mark Talbot says they don't believe Cody wandered off on his own and they have no evidence that points to an abduction. Police have said Cody's father, Corey Bigsby, told them he last saw his son around 2 a.m. on Monday, but Chief Talbot just told us they don't believe the father's timeline is reliable. He says when it comes to a person of interest, like you said, police are interested in Cody's parents. Now they want to hear from anyone in the community in Hampton and even farther. If they have seen Cody, they are particularly focused on information and sightings between the hours of noon on Sunday, January 30th and Monday at 9 a.m. when their search began. They want pictures, video, security footage, anything someone in the community might have. The evidence doesn't match what we've been told, uh, so we need to investigate further and, and we need the help of the public so that we can find anybody who may have seen this child or even anything that uh, might be related to this investigation. News three on top of breaking news right now. Anxiety is high in Hampton. We begin with new information in the search for missing a missing four year old boy, Cody Bigsby. His father says he last saw him around 2 a.m. Nearly 24 hours later, still no sign of the little boy. Now, crews have been searching all day in the area around the Buckrow Point apartments and even now Police remain on the scene late into the night. News 3 reporter Leandra Head is also there live. And Leandra, I understand there are some new developments happening right now. Yes, absolutely. We actually just recently discovered those new developments. We were parked actually in the parking lot in um, in front of the apartment complex. Then we drove over here and we actually saw police officers searching through a dumpster. Um, police looked like they were searching for evidence in the missing case of four year old Cody Bigsby. Um, I also saw three men in dressed in what appeared to be hazmat suits, also searching thoroughly through that dumpster. Um, they just recently actually put up a yellow caution tape near that dumpster. So uh, it looks like they've found some substantial evidence from what, a, what it appears to be from here. Um, we did get a chance to attend a press conference earlier today with the police chief, and here's what he had to say. We received a call about 9 o'clock this morning 
uh, from Corey Bigsby, who is the father of four-year-old Cody. Little Cody was asleep when his father last saw him. When he woke up, Cody was nowhere to be found. Mr. Bigsby said that he woke up this morning and he found that his son Cody was missing. Hampton Police and the FBI have been searching for Cody since the early morning hours. Hampton Police tell News 3 it's all hands on deck and are asking for the public's help in locating four-year-old Cody. Cody is an African-American child. He is about three and a half feet tall. He has a medium complexion and he's believed to be dressed in all black and he may be wearing Spider-Man flip-flops. One Hampton man says he has a grandson who is Cody's age. Hearing that Cody is missing, it's home for him. Back when the Nora Tomlin case happened, when he first come up missing, they didn't allow the public to help search. I'm not gonna let that happen again. Let me tell y'all, I am so thankful for real men and real fathers. I want y'all to hear what he said. I'm going to back this up. Love, love what he said. Right here. Listen at this again. It's home for him. Back when the Nora Tomlin case happened, when he first come up missing, they didn't allow the public to help search. I'm not going to let that happen again. When he first come up missing, they didn't allow the public to help search. I'm not going to let that happen again. Cody's age. Hearing that Cody is missing, it's home for him. Back when the Nora Tomlin case happened, when he first come up missing, they didn't allow the public to help search. I'm not going to let that happen again. Not only the concern, the stress in his voice, and he said, we are Americans, we are fathers, we are parents. We are citizens and we are not going to stand by and just let our children be out here just missing when we could go out there and go help and search. There are people out there searching just like we could be out there searching and the more of us that we have that can jump together, bond together and do this thing together, we can get results a lot quicker. I absolutely commend what he said and love what he said. That is so important. Now, I'd never advocate for anybody breaking the law. As long as it's not breaking the law, then I say, screw what they're talking about. As long as it's not breaking the law, I'm going to be out there looking. I would do it in my city. I do it in my community. Unless you're telling me that you're going to arrest me, which I still, me personally, I still might go look anyway. You're not going to stop me from going out there and looking and trying to help. I don't think that, I don't think that, I think you could have made more progress in those situations where if you would have allowed volunteers, maybe they have good reasons, but let me just, let me just say, I applaud what he just said. I love what he just said. Love it. I'm going to be out here searching. Richard, a Hampton resident says he's been driving around town looking for four year old Cody, searching for any clues. I started over here at the church on the other side of Bloxham's Corner where the substation is. Walked around the substation, looked up and down the ditch. When I got done there, I started at Salt Ponds, worked my way all the way down, and I went down every, every road back from Salt Ponds to Colonial Acres. Police say Cody's parents have been cooperating with authorities. We are interested in, in any video that anybody might have of something that they believe could be related. We aren't uh, convinced that it happened at exactly when we found out about it. So if anybody out there believes that they have video or information that could be related to Cody's disappearance, we want to see it as quickly as possible. And several police are still here on the scene. They tell me they will continue searching for four-year-old Cody Bigsby until they find him. For now, live in Hampton, Leandra Head, News 3. Leandra, thank you for the late breaking developments. Many of you have contacted us wondering why an Amber Alert was not issued for Cody. So here's the criteria for an Amber Alert. The child must be 17 or younger. There must be a reasonable belief that the child was abducted or law enforcement must believe the child is in imminent danger.
and the child must be entered into the National Crime Information Center's missing persons file. Let us get right to News 3 reporter Ellen Ice. She was at that news conference this morning. So Ellen, what else did we learn? Well, Todd, we learned police don't think four-year-old Cody Bigsby wandered off or was abducted. Let's go ahead and take a look at his photo now. Cody was first reported missing yesterday morning. Initial reports were that... And let me say this again while they're running that picture. Real quick, I want to say thank you also to our other advocate channels who talk about these stories. Make this go viral. Leave it to Beaver. Also, the Disturbing Truth, as well as Kimberly Flower. I think anybody who was able to do these stories and talk about these things and help spread this news, the more that we can make this the priority and talk about it more, the quicker we can get results as well as get boots on the ground and help get these situations resolved. So I wanted to shout you guys out, but thank y'all so much. The father last saw him at 2 a.m., but by 9 a.m. he was gone. Police say that information may not be accurate. They are asking for the public's help wanting people to check surveillance video and pictures they have starting at noon on Sunday, pushing back their initial timeline significantly. And there was a link to sign up for search efforts for the first 50 people that has already filled up and they are not accepting any more volunteers. Police say Cody's mom is in town and police are speaking with her. They also say the Virginia Department of Emergency Management joined search efforts today. They think Cody is likely in the city of Hampton. Police say they are talking to the people responsible for Cody's safety and have named the parents persons of interest. Let's hear from Hampton Police Chief Mark Talbot now. The evidence that we have does not completely match the stories that we have received at this point. So we are opening up our um, focus in terms of the time that we are interested in. Police say an Amber Alert has not been issued because they don't think this was an abduction. If you have any information, you're asked to call the crime line at 188 Lock You Up. Live in Hampton, Ellen I. 13 News Now at 11 begins with breaking news in the search for Cody Bigsby. Take a look at your screen. The four year old boy from Hampton hasn't been seen in nearly 24 hours now. Investigators have been outside the family's home on Ranelette Drive. Since around 9 this morning, searching for any signs of the boy, that is in the Colonial Acres area. And within the last 30 minutes, the search has picked up. Investigators have zeroed in on a dumpster down the road from where Cody was last seen. Crime tape has been put up, and men in suits, you see them right there, have been going through that dumpster piece by piece. Sarah Hammond is there now, and Sarah, bring us up to date. What more are you seeing there? Yeah, David, for most of the day, we've been just a block down the road at a staging area with Hampton Police, Hampton Fire, uh, the FBI. But just about 20, 30 minutes ago, we all moved a block down the road at the entrance to the Boca Point apartment complex, where it looks like police have kind of set their sights, like you said, on this dumpster behind us. But it looks like they've started putting everything back inside the dumpster. So it looks like they have not found anything there at this point. And we do not know at this particular point what may have led them to that dumpster, correct? Correct. Yes, we don't know. But, you know, back when we were, it, we're leading into hour 14 of this search at this point. They've had helicopters, planes, drones, dogs, really, and people on foot searching, really every resource they say they could think of, but still um, no luck at this point finding that four-year-old. All right, I'm going to stop it right there because there's still a little bit more, but they're basically kind of uh, reiterating some of the information that we've already heard. So again, let me remind you guys, there was a reason that there was not an Amber Alert. We're not saying that there was a mistake. We're saying that in order to have an Amber Alert, there has to be criteria that it has to fill. The first thing is that they had to believe that the child was abducted and they also have to have the correct information in order to put an Amber Alert out because if you don't, you could end up with not enough information, incorrect information, and what we don't want to do is we don't want to send people out on a wild goose chase and cause more problems and confusion. So the Amber Alert system is meant to lessen the amount of confusion to maximize the amount of effectiveness. I could never say that again twice. So I'm glad I said it right the first time. 
They want to minimize the confusion and maximize the success in finding the children. That's why there was no Amber Alert here. They don't believe that this child just went missing or was abducted. The biological father at this point, from what I understand, and when we get more information about it, will put his face and name out there if they decide to charge him or the mother. But he is a person of interest, and I think he should absolutely be a person of interest. He should absolutely be grilled to the furthest extent. Grill him like a George Foreman grill. Get all the juice out of there. Get all the fat out of there. Squeeze his ass for every bit of information. Do y'all agree with what I'm saying? I do. I don't feel bad for him. Because as a parent, if you really loved your kid, if you really cared about a life that you helped create, the least you can do is answer questions truthfully and honestly. He hasn't done that so far. That makes me think that you are a lying ass, dad, allegedly. I don't think a real man or a real father will lie on their own kids, misinform on their own kids, especially when you claim that they're missing. I think that this... It's all kind of hella foul. I just have to pray that this baby is alive. Y'all know how this usually turns out. So let's keep the opt optimism out there until we can give a proper report and update. Okay? So if you're watching this on the replay, then I do apologize if we do put out information that is not completely up to date until we get to that point. But I think we're going to get some answers here pretty quick. So let's pray for the investigators, pray for the volunteers that they can find everything that they need because I think the dad is lying and I think he needs to be spanked for that alone. Keep a prayer hands up for this baby boy and hope that we can find Cody Bixby. Young Prince, we're keeping you in our prayers.